Today's project is a jug with a folded spout. In this video, I'm going to make a jug with a modified spout. This method gives extra character to a jug. How and where I cut the rim will add much variety to the appearance. I will also show my way of making handles. I've tried lots of handle making methods and have now settled on this way. I use 1 kg buff stoneware clay with 10% lava clay which gives charming earthy freckles in the glaze. I'm making a cone shape to equalize the density of the clay and align the particles, followed by centering. My left and right hands are vertically very slightly offset, so it makes a spiral which the clay naturally moves up. When I push the clay down, I focus on the edge of my right palm. It doesn't need to be a strong push. The angle and the speed of my hand movement are the keys. My left hand is angled down to prevent a mushroom shape occurring. If my left hand is horizontal to the clay, it will often accumulate clay between my fingers and encourage a mushroom shape. I want to have a base more than 12 cm diameter for this jug, which is the size of my seven fingers. I'm opening the center hole with my right middle finger, which has a navigation roll. All other fingers are giving additional power to dig the clay. I use the skimmed clay as a lubricant. I'm making an undercut with my right fingertips. Then I pull the clay up. I use a wooden spatula to compress the bottom to prevent an S crack. I make a gentle pull for the first time to equalize the wall thickness. I'm compressing the top from three directions, which is a very useful habit to keep a strong edge. I hold my right fingers tightly together and my fingertips are making a straight line. If I pull straight up, the clay will follow.
Both thumbs are interlocked, so the pull-up speed is the same for both hands. I need a narrow top, so I squeeze the cylinder. I'm going to compress the internal bottom corner with this wooden tool. Then pull the clay up. I'm holding the tool straight against the wall and my left index finger is pushing the clay against the tool. Then I slowly move my left hands up. I like this handmade wooden tool, but it's made from soft wood, which wears out and leaves raised grain. Now the grain starts to drag the thinner clay easily, so I need to remake it with hard wood, which has much finer grain. It just happened. I can stop halfway and add more water to make the surface slippery to avoid this problem for now. I'm compressing the outside wall with a spatula and finalizing the shape. I'm squeezing the neck to make a collar. My left index finger is supporting the point of the curve. How much I drop the collar will make a big difference to the appearance later. I compress the edge with a chamois leather from the side to make it stronger. I make the guide for the string to cut later. I need to make the clay top a little bit stiffer for easier cutting. So I use a heat gun just a little at the top. I start from a couple of centimeters below the collar. I keep the wire tension tight and slowly pull to myself with an angle.
the part which the wire starts to cut is bent. I hold one finger at the same position, then get the round circle back. I wet my hands and fold the cut collar to make a spout. This is always ad lib. Each time is different and fun. I covered the spout part with newspaper so it didn't dry too quickly. Now all the body is laser hard. It's time for trimming. I use the skimmed clay to fix the jug to the wheel. I threw the top half thin enough, so there was no need for trimming. I only trim the bottom half to make the jug light and in good shape. This is a water jug, so I keep the bottom flat. I tap the center gently to make sure the inside is higher than the outside, so it doesn't rock. I start with a long piece of clay to make a handle. I roll the clay with both hands from the center to the outside. When the clay becomes slightly thicker than I want, I use a board to make it even. In this way, the clay becomes a smooth and a compressed piece. I'm going to make a rope effect as a decoration. I need enough space for rolling. I press the clay to make it flat so it becomes hand friendly. I use a damp cloth to shape the handle so the clay doesn't crack.
Both parts of the clay are getting hard, so I need a good attachment. I scratch the body to add soft clay to help the connection. I apply the soft clay with a toothbrush, which makes the surface like a magic tape, so it should grab the opposite surface better. I need to use my imagination to check the handle size as this will shrink about 15%. Lastly, I check the straightness. Then I press well. I add extra moisture to make both sides of the clay of equal softness. I cover the jug well after the handle is attached. In this way, the clay body moisture becomes equal, so there will not be a problem of cracking at the handle joints. I leave them overnight like this. Then I use a lighter cover to dry it slowly and completely. I hope I explained this process well. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section.